Hi everybody, it's Dr. Sherry Kaplan from Vitality MD. I have a special guest today on Ask the Doctor and it happens to be my husband, Dr. David Friedman. He's a cardiologist and um, I just figured why not get an opinion from a cardiologist or what, what can we learn from him. So uh, Dr. Friedman, what things do you uh, tend to see in your office? Uh, I see uh, a lot of patients with heart disease, but I also see a lot of patients who are at risk for heart disease. And uh, especially in the last 10, 15 years, uh, as I spend more time in practice, I'm seeing, unfortunately, more and more people. Uh, at a younger age, at, right? At a younger age, and people are still not doing things right. And the problem is, I think, and I'll get into this in a minute, the problem is, I think, um, we just work too hard to take care of ourselves. So people who have heart disease often present with symptoms like shortness of breath or chest discomfort or fatigue, usually when they're exerting themselves. Because if you have a problem wrong with your motor, you're going to notice it when you need to use your motor. So if you need to go up the stairs or carry some bags or, or play racquetball that one time in a month that you're playing, that's when you're going to often notice it at first. Now that's not 100% that's not of the time, but that, it's a good clue that if you if you're realizing in the last two, three, four months that you've been having more shortness of breath or chest discomfort or fatigue when you're doing things, it's a sign that there's something wrong with your motor. And that's a good time to see your family doctor and your family doctor can decide what to do with you. But let, there's... Let me interrupt a second. So just to bring it better, uh, you know, more relevant to uh, our audience. So, you know, what I would sort of say is that I tend to see a lot more younger people being affected with uh, cardiovascular disease or infl uh, inflammatory processes. And basically, uh, cardiovascular disease is actually caused by an underlying inflammation, but also a lot of lifestyle things. What kind of lifestyle things, you know, would you sort of say people can modify or change to help lower their risk of cardiovascular disease. Okay, so... And specifically, I guess, hypertension, because that's something that may be one of the first markers that we start seeing. The risk factors that we need to worry about that, are, uh, that put us at increased risk of developing heart disease, as we get older especially, but some, in some cases when we're younger, are smoking, high blood yeah. pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes or insulin resistance, being overweight, um, family history, you can't, do, you can't pick your parents, but it's, it's a risk factor, having sleep apnea. These are uh, stress, stress is a big thing. So these are the things that we all have to work on. And if you have high blood pressure and you see your family doctor or your cardiologist and you go on a blood pressure medicine, you have to also realize we're not just treating your high blood pressure. We have to treat every single element of these components that contribute to our increased risk because they're all individual attacks on our body's health. So kind of like the weight loss philosophy is that it's a multi-pronged approach. So, right. you know, maybe you're being put on a blood pressure medicine or somebody's not on the, you know, not ready to really go on the uh, blood pressure me uh, medicine but might be able to do some lifestyle things that might change their or lower their blood pressure. So what would things be like, you know? I what think. would I recommend? Yeah. Well, I, I, again, working on everything, but specifically, I want everybody to work out regularly. I think the best exercise is a is a uh, is a resistance type exercise where you're doing a cardio resistance type exercise. You pick a weight that you can comfortably lift in a manner that doesn't injure your back, your neck, your shoulders, your hips, your knees. You do that regularly. You do it with minimum breaks. You get yourself some cardio doing that. You build yourself muscle mass. Muscle mass is very important for good health. And also makes you more insulin sensitive. So the more insulin resistance we have, the more risk we have for cardiovascular disease. It also correct? makes you look really, really good. <laughs> like that too. Right. What so about our diet? Diet. Um, there's many different philosophies, but what you want to not do, you want to not do bad things. Well, yeah, you want to not do bad things? Yeah, yeah so you, you want to eat right, things. so you want to basically try to eat more of a healthier diet, maybe a little bit less meat, you know, more of a plant-based and anti-inflammatory kind of thing. We want to change our diet to lower um, insulin to help us become more insulin sensitive, so diet's great. Um, what, are, what other things that we can do to help lower our risk? We need to sleep well. We need to relax. We need to de-stress. That's a big problem in North America. We don't know how to relax. We're all working way too hard. So getting your sleep and getting a good sleep. If you don't sleep well, there's 
there's things you, there are things you can do to sleep better. And, and also ruling out, you're the big guy who rules out, out sleep, sleep apnea, apnea all the time. You love sleep apnea because if your spouse or you notice that one of you is snoring, you tend to be tired in the afternoon, there's a very good chance, especially if you're overweight, and especially if there's another member of your family who tends to nod off at parties, there's a very good chance that you yourself have sleep apnea. When you have sleep apnea, you don't oxygenate as well as you should. As a result, all of your organs, including your brain, just don't get the amount of oxygen that they, they should be getting, and you suffer the consequences. And people and can then present with weight gain, mood problems, right heart strain, high blood pressure. So it is something that's really important to uh, diagnose and actually treat. You know, it's, it's never too late to do the things that you need to do to make yourself feel better, look better, live, live longer, and live better. And what about um, salt, right? So I think uh, a lot of people have too, um, uh, a high uh, salt intake or that they're actually what we call salt sensitive and actually there's genes where we can actually look at whether you are an individual who is salt sensitive and therefore when you have salt you have a higher risk of having elevated blood pressure. Yeah, I see two types of patients. I see patients traditionally who if they have too much salt in their diet and they have other things wrong with them, they're much more prone to develop high blood pressure at an earlier phase in their life. And these are the patients we tell to have a low salt diet. But I also see patients, more so my younger patients, where they're prone to lightheadedness, fatigue, and not doing so well when they're working out. And these are my patients with low blood pressure who actually need salt. They often need a lot of salt. So it's important to identify which group of patients you fall into. You might be in the third group of patients who's perfectly fine with the amount of salt you're getting. We're all different, and uh, what one person needs can be very different from what another person needs, which is why you have to know, you have to know your body, uh, listen to the signs that, uh, when something's wrong, and uh, try to apply what you need to do to make yourself feel Okay, better. so I think, did we talk about smoking cessation? Smoking cessation? Um, also, because that increases your risk of uh, hypertension, heart disease, and whatnot. So stop smoking, manage by your what not, stress. By what not, we mean cancer. <laughs> um, you know, so exercise, manage your stress, um, eat right, exercise. Um, and then there's other things that you can do to help lower your risk, like lowering inflammation. Um, you know, um, and there's actually other things that you can do to help lower blood pressure. Sorry, I have to cough. <coughs> <coughs> Like we, um, an infrared sauna um, has studies on it that it can lower blood pressure and help you burn calories. Um, so anyways, um, thank you very much for um, joining us on Ask the Doctor this week and maybe we'll have you on again uh, to discuss another topic. So if you liked what you heard, like us on Facebook. If you, uh, um, you know, you think what we had to say was valuable, share it um, and enjoy. And if you have questions that you would like us to answer, uh, email us at info at vitalitymd.com. And uh, till next week.